Good morning and welcome. My name is Dr. Fred Myers, and I'm the Associate Dean for Precision Medicine here at the UC Davis School of Medicine. I would like to provide you with a brief overview of the 46th commencement exercises of the University of California Davis School of Medicine. The City of Sacramento Pipe Band will lead the procession with traditional ceremonial music on pipes and drums. They will be followed by the departmental banner carriers and our esteemed faculty. Our distinguished graduating class of 2017 includes 102 candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine, 38 candidates for the degree of Master of Public Health, and six candidates for the degree of Master of Health Informatics. The honorable stage party will then enter the hall, led by the mace. The mace is an ancient symbol of authority and expertise, which will be carried by Grand Marshal Dr. Paul Fitzgerald, Vice Chairperson of the Faculty of the School of Medicine. The mace will rest throughout the ceremony in its place of honor on the table at the front of the stage. The color guard will then enter the house to present the colors. Candidate Maxwell P. Stephenson will sing our national anthem. Now you will notice that the academic attire of the participants varies widely. Your program provides some helpful information in that regard, and I encourage you to take a look to help you understand the significance of the dress. For example, you will notice that green appears throughout much of the dress of the School of Medicine due to the fact that green has traditionally been associated with medicine, health, and life. This is one of the few times in this beautiful hall that photography is allowed. However, we ask that you please remain in your seat while taking photographs. Please silence all electronic devices at this time and note your nearest exit in case of emergency. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and please enjoy the ceremony.
<laughs> good job, Danny. <clears throat> so good. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. The 2017 commencement of the School of Medicine at UC Davis is now assembled. I would like to ask everybody to rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the national anthem. The national anthem will be sung by Maxwell Stevenson, a candidate for the degree. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the Thank you, Maxwell. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome to the podium Interim Dean, Dr. Lars Berglund. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fitzgerald, and thank you, Maxwell. I think that was a totally wonderful experience. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 46th commencement of the School of Medicine. At this time, I would like to introduce the stage party members. Beginning on my immediate left in the first row is Dr. Paul Fitzgerald, Vice Chairperson for the Faculty Senate. Next to him is Dr. Mark Service, Vice Dean in the Office of Medical Education. Next is Dr. Tonya Fancher, Associate Dean, Workforce Innovation and Community Engagement. Dr. Lee Jones, who is well known to many of our students, is our keynote speaker for today. Dr. Julie Freischlag, our former Dean and Vice Chancellor and our very special guest today. Dr. Thomas Nesbitt, Interim Vice Chancellor for the UC Davis Human Health Sciences. Dr. Mark Henderson, Associate Dean for Admissions. Dr. Frank Sosa, Assistant Dean for Admissions and Student Development. And Dr. Faith Fitzgerald, Professor of Internal Medicine. Seated in the second row on my immediate left is Dr. Heather Young, Dean and Associate Vice Chancellor for the School of Nursing. Chong Porter, Associate Vice Chancellor for Health Sciences Advancement. Dr. Michael Larmore, Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Maureen Stanton, Vice Provost for Academic Affairs at UC Davis. Dr. Colleen Clancy, Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Personnel in the School of Medicine. Dr. Henry Tan, Interim Associate Vice Chancellor for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. Dr. Stephen McCurdy, 
director of the Master of Public Health program, and at the, finally, Dr. Nicholas Anderson, Division Chief in Health Informatics. Many leaders in the health system play vital and important roles in the support of our many missions. Faculty leaders provide continuous mentorship, direction, and inspiration to staff and students alike. Many of these faculty leaders are here this morning, and please stand and be recognized. Stand up. <laughs> I'm, I'm so pleased to welcome our special guest, Dr. Julie Freischlag. And Julie was served as the Vice Chancellor of Human Health Sciences at UC Davis and Dean of the School of Medicine over the last few years. As many of you know, she recently took a new position as President and the Chief Executive Officer of Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center in North Carolina. But we are very, very pleased that she is with us today to honor the UC Davis School of Medicine class of 2017. Please welcome Dr. Julie Freischlag. So good morning. Um, it's wonderful to be back at UC Davis and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to celebrate the School of Medicine class of 2017 at this wonderful event. Over the last few years, students in this class dedicated themselves to pursuing degrees that will enable them to provide world-class health care to communities far and wide and solve health challenges around the world. I have truly enjoyed getting to know them and I'm so proud of their many accomplishments. I can still recall the many feelings I had during my commencement at Rush Medical School. The excitement and mystery about how my residency would go, the eagerness I had to challenge myself, and of course, that little bit of fear that sneaks into all our hearts. I know you are all feeling the same emotions right now, and I want you to take a look at the audience in front of you, at your family, friends, and mentors here who are here to support you. And more than a 1,000 people up on the second tier here uh, are here to celebrate your great achievements and to cheer you on. Take a look at your peers sitting around you. Many will be your lifelong friends. Some will be a vital part of your future professional network for research, clinical, and other collaborations. And others will advocate for you for future jobs, promotions, or other opportunities. As a UC Davis School of Medicine graduate, you have a huge family of supporters here for, and, and when you need them. And this is so important because healthcare is a very rewarding yet challenging career path. And being mindful of your health and well-being will be critical. At UC Davis, you learn the art and science of caring for patients and of addressing public health issues. But as you begin this next chapter, you will need to hone the art and science of caring for yourselves at the same time. During my time as Vice Chancellor of Human Health Sciences and Dean of the School of Medicine, I shared a monthly video update called Three Things to keep our faculty, students, residents, nurses, and staff up to date on UC Davis health activities. Students, today I'm going to double down and share six things with you to help you cultivate wellness and navigate the many emotional, physical, and spiritual challenges you will face throughout this next phase of your careers. First, maintain a flexible pace and practice good time management. This will keep your head above water, lower your stress level, and help you set aside critical downtime needed to recharge your batteries. Second, keep an open mind and follow your heart. Identify what works for you and what doesn't, and this takes a certain measure of self-awareness, an ability to honestly examine where your passion lies, where you excel, and where you don't excel, even if you want to. I guarantee that if you find and nurture your passion, you will have greater happiness in your life and a positive sense of well-being. Third, keep things in perspective. When times are difficult, remind yourself that the rough patch isn't a way of life, it's a temporary state and it will pass. What can you learn from the experience? How have you contributed? Trying to put the negative into perspective can have a positive effect on well-being 
and I encourage you to look for the gifts in each challenge. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, bad times have a scientific value. These are occasions a good learner would not miss. Fourth, if you find yourself overwhelmed at any point during your career, ask for help. Lean on family, friends, and peers for support. Get in touch with your program director, your boss, your mentors. They are all there to help guide you and make sure you are well and feel supported. Fifth, while residency and other healthcare careers can be demanding, there are truly wonderful, life-changing experiences. So enjoy yourself. You will meet amazing faculty, physicians, nurses, residents, staff, patients, peers, researchers, and colleagues who will greatly enrich your life. Never stop looking for opportunities to network and develop authentic professional relationships with them. This builds an invaluable community that will endure throughout your career, and the relationships you build will greatly enhance your overall health and well-being. And finally, stay positive and maintain a healthy attitude by consciously choosing positivity. You not only influence your own happiness, but also the happiness of others. British playwright Tom Stoppard said, a healthy attitude is contagious, but don't wait to catch it from others. Be a carrier. Bring a positive spirit to your work, and I guarantee that you and those around you will feel more fulfilled in your roles. I asked a few of your peers to reflect on three things that they will take away from their time at UC Davis School of Medicine and bring with them to the next phase of their careers. And so let's take a look to see what they had to say. These are the three things I learned at UC Davis School of Medicine. The importance of giving back to our community by providing health care to the underserved. To stay curious about my patients and the world around me. How to approach a patient. I think everyone that I've interacted with, from residents to faculty, even the staff, they've been wonderful, great role models for me to learn how to approach the patients that I want to treat in the future. So three things that UC Davis has taught me. Number one is to have ganas, uh, meaning grit. Um, even when we've had obstacles in our past, knowing we could keep pushing forward. The second thing is how to be an educator. I think that it's really important to know how to teach because it's a very difficult skill. And all the residents, the faculty, the staff, again, the same people that I've interacted with have taught me how to do that. Uh, number two is working hard. Uh, reaching for the impossible with a can-do attitude um, has made us all better. The importance of taking the time to get to know the patient as a person. To contextualize my patient presentations in relationship to social, environmental, and political factors. And lastly, the importance of perseverance. And the importance of mentoring the next wave of physicians, just like we once were. And number three, UC Davis has been a lot like family, I've had enormous support from faculty, staff, and colleagues, and it's just a place that I know we are all in this together. So congratulations, class of 2017. We did it. And the last that I'd really like to talk about that was most important to me is my family, the UC Davis family. The students that I've gotten to know, the stories that I've heard, the patients that I've seen, the residents and faculty that I've interacted with, they're an immense part of my life now, and I'm really excited to be working with them next year. So I'd like to say congratulations to the class of 2017. I love you all, and hopefully see some of you next year. So indeed, UC Davis School of Medicine will be a lifelong family of peers, mentors, collaborators, and friends. 
As each of you reflect on your time at UC Davis, I hope you will think about your own three things that you've learned here. Though I've moved on to another university, I've spent some time reflecting on what I learned from the class of 2017. As your peers shared in the video, you have shown me ganas, the passion and desire to achieve and the grit and resilience to do so. You have demonstrated that you are willing and able to roll your sleeves up and say, how can I help? How can we collaborate for a greater impact? And you have greatly expanded my appreciation of diversity and inclusion. Students, wherever your careers take you, do not lose your great spirit, keep it charged, and I look forward to watching each of you progress through what is likely to be a long and rewarding healthcare career. Congratulations on this wonderful accomplishment today, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. I'm now very pleased to introduce our student speaker, Sophie Lucas Suzanne Rossillo. Sophie earned a degree in neuroscience from the University of California at Los Angeles prior to joining us here at the UC Davis School of Medicine. While here, she was involved in the Klingenstein Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fellowship, Alpha Omega Alpha, and Gold Humanism Honor Society, and she actually received several awards yesterday at a ceremony. Outside of medicine, she has a passion for all things related to true crime, such as reading no crime novels and watching crime documentaries. And maybe that's not surprising because there is, the analytical skills needed in medicine are not that different from those needed to, to resolve crimes. Not surprisingly, she has plans to become a child and adolescent forensic psychiatrist, and she's heading back to UCLA, to the Neuropsychiatric Institute for Psychiatry Residency next month. That institute, like UC Davis, is part of a behavioral health center of excellence, so I'm sure she'll have many opportunities to go back and link back to us here at UC Davis while at UCLA. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sophie Rossier. Welcome everyone, good morning. One of the benefits of being a medical student here is that you have access to see some of this generation's best minds perform here at the Mondavi Center. Writers, singers, speakers, comedians, musicians. In this very auditorium, I have cried with author David Sedaris and laughed with podcaster Sarah Koenig. Big shoes have stood on this stage, and today is no exception. I am honored to stand among this outstanding group of graduates. Thank you for being here. Like the proverbial fire pit, this auditorium has been a meeting place for one of the most basic human contacts, storytelling. Whether stories are told through film, literature, music, or overheard in your neighborhood coffee shop, we can't help but lend an ear and listen. We're all guilty of watching our favorite movie for the tenth time, or staying in our car after we pull into our driveway to finish the last bit of our radio station. Stories move us. They give us that momentary suspension of disbelief and give us vision into a world that is so different from our own. They give us empathy, change our minds, make us feel alive. Even our own story is a culmination of experiences that connect us with the people around us. At times, our own story can feel like a tragedy, at times a comedy, at times a love story. But today, it feels like a success story of 146 medical students who overcame so many obstacles to stand here on this stage. There are so many stories I could share with you today about the journey of medical school, the heartbreak of losing my first patient, the feeling after delivering my first baby, giving my first cancer diagnosis. But today, I wanted to share a story with you about someone who, interestingly enough, is not affiliated with medicine and is someone who actually I never personally met, but who changed the way that I approach the world. Here's the story. About three years ago, around the start of medical school, I received a gift from my boyfriend's mom, Alona. The gift was an old jacket of hers, French, with about 12 pockets, some overlapping, some hidden in other pockets, some in very odd places. Doesn't make much sense. Like I said, it's French. But anyways, one day I was putting something away, I was trying out a new pocket, and I found something very unusual. 
At first, I thought it was a Polaroid, but my boyfriend photographer was very quick to correct me that it was in fact a slide, a 1961 Kodachrome slide. When I asked my boyfriend's mom about it, she remembered that she had seen it lying in the street in Los Gatos, California, and she had picked it up in good faith with the intention of returning it to its owner. You can see the slide up here. Uh, upside down, of course. It says, Lieutenant Lounsbury and Lieutenant Commander Thayer, Portofino, Italy, December 1960. So next step was Google. And let me tell you something, it was not an easy find. When I went on Google, it generated 150,000 results in 0.58 seconds. Anyways, I'll save you the pain and fast forward to the hours of searching. But luckily, I did find someone who I believed was one of the men in this slide. His name was John Howard Thayer. And it turns out, Howie Thayer was the center of an amazing story. This picture was taken in December of 1960, but in March of 1952, John Howard Thayer was Lieutenant Junior Grade, a Sky Raider on the aircraft carrier USS Valley Forge in the Sea of Japan. On March 22nd, Thayer's squadron was on attack, each flying their own plane, when Thayer suddenly heard a distress call coming in over his radio. He heard, I'm blind, for God's sake, help me, I'm blind. At 12,000 feet, an enemy anti-aircraft shell had exploded in another Sky Raider's cockpit, Kenneth Schechter, who coincidentally happened to be Thayer's roommate. From the newspapers I read, Howie Thayer made an instant decision that it was his duty that he would go and rescue this blinded pilot. He climbed with full throttle to around 10,000 feet, where the injured pilot, barely conscious, was flying. You can imagine the injured pilot's relief when he heard his best friend answering back over the radio. Thayer guided his friend, get your nose down, pull back a little, you're doing all right now. At 200 miles an hour, for over 100 miles, Schechter, blind, bleeding, nauseous, released his remaining bombs and amazingly successfully landed on a dirt landing strip without landing gear because Thayer guided him. Schechter would later say it was a perfect landing. No fire, no pain, no strain, the best landing I ever made. The injured pilot, Schechter, ultimately regained vision in his left eye, but his piloting career was over. He received multiple accolades for his brave descent. A movie, Men of the Fighting Lady, was even based on the famous Saturday Evening Post article, The Case of the Blinded Pilot. He died in 2013. After the incredible landing, Thayer, the man in our slide, remained in the military. Here he is in Portofino, Italy in December of 1960, and he died one month later in January of 1961, guiding another pilot with electrical failure. He crashed into the Mediterranean Sea. He was largely unrecognized for his actions until 2009, when he posthumously received the Distinguished Flying Cross 57 years after his heroic deed. Now, you might be asking yourself, why am I sharing this story at my medical school graduation? And there are a couple of reasons. First, I chose this story because it's about the meaning of success in the context of sacrifice and the importance of single instrumental individuals in the context of others' achievement. All of us, the 142 graduates standing here today, at some point or another, have felt like this blinded, bleeding, terrified pilot alone at 10,000 feet. We have felt like there were no options, and then out of nowhere, someone comes to our rescue. To make it where we are today, standing on this stage, we have always had someone to guide us. Many of those individuals are sitting in this audience today, and many are not. I want this opportunity to say that we would not be here without you. Today, in this speech, we honor you, those who have sacrificed so much for our success. Thank you. Secondly, to my fellow graduates, just as we have felt like this person in need of guidance, over four years, we have also transitioned to becoming the guide, the calm, collected, knowledgeable physician with a sense of duty and responsibility to help those in need. One of the things that stood out to me during my research was this. It was said that when Thayer directed his friend to turn his plane to the right, Thayer on the inside turned right with it. It speaks volumes to how connected Thayer was to his friend in distress. And to me, it sounds a whole lot like the delicate balance and the dance of an ideal patient-physician relationship. Meeting our patients in their darkest moments, knowing when to put on a brave face, and empathizing with their every move. During this transition to becoming a physician, let us learn to balance this strength with softness, our courage with empathy, and our bravery with silence and reflection. 
And moreover, let us not only be guides for our patients, but also for our students, our families, and our communities. And my third reason is to emphasize the fact that not getting recognition does not take away from the magnitude of heroic actions. Always remember the impact that one individual can have on your life, whether that be patients who have had an impact on you or you on your patients. Stay humble and remember that one person is never too small to make a difference. I will conclude with my favorite Latin quote, per aspera ad astra, which means through the thorns to the stars. Congratulations on this wonderful day. And for those of you wondering, yes, I did track down Thayer's family. I got in contact with his son, Bill Thayer, two and a half years after I found the slide. It turned out that that was the last known picture of his father. Thank you. Thank you very much for those eloquent words, Sophie. I will now introduce, to, now introducing this year's commencement speaker will be co-class president Joseph Kim. Okay. Okay. All right, so. Today, I have the privilege of introducing our keynote speaker, Dr. Lee Jones. Uh, he is nationally known for his work in medical education. In his career so far, he's been the Associate Dean of Student Affairs at three major institutions. He's been the director of various psychiatric services, a revered medical educator, and been involved with innumerable critically important projects at the AAMC. As our former Associate Dean for Student Affairs, he relentlessly championed for Davis Medical students. We will never forget that. And his mentorship, his support, his friendship is the reason why, on behalf of the class of 2017, I am so honored to present Dr. Lee Jones. So I'm an emergency room psychiatrist it's not nice to make us cry. Um, so, Vice Chancellor Nesbitt, uh, Dean Berglund, Dr. Freischlag, distinguished guests, families, friends, and most of all, the class of 2017. Good morning. Almost four years ago, you started UC Davis School of Medicine at the induction ceremony, and I remember it very clearly. We were all a lot younger. I was a lot younger. Um, you were excited, energized, and somewhat naive. In retrospect, did you have any idea what you were really in for? No. I hope you would still have done it. You each brought a wealth of experiences, talents, dreams, and a bit of anxiety with you to school. You also brought the hopes of the people around you, your friends and family. You would not be here without those people. I'd like to invite the class to stand and recognize the people that are here and not here and give them a rousing round of applause, please. This is the part I have to stop because they can go on forever. They're so excited about you. Thank you. The really good no news is that even with an MD after your name, these people are all continuing to be your supports. Don't ever forget this. I know it's been four years of very hard work, and I know, because I know you, a lot of very hard playing. You rose to each challenge in your education, expanding your knowledge, skills, and maturity, and achieving your degree. You've put an immense amount of knowledge into your heads and gone through test after test after test, only to hear that a large percentage of what you've learned will someday be proven wrong. Welcome to the miracle of modern medicine. You've cared for people from all walks of life, living in situations you could not have imagined. You've seen people at the worst points in their life, and I'm sure been inspired by their resiliency, caring, and the strength of their human spirit. You've grown in ways you don't recognize while going from naive pre-medical students to achieving your MD today. The world, your world, is forever changed. You are no longer just the daughter or son, neighbor or friend. Your opinion can't just be an opinion. It must be based on continually updated knowledge. 
your pronouncements really carry life and death consequences for others. To quote Spider-Man's Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. As an intern, I was, as always, rushed the early morning I was called for a non-functioning central IV line. I was a surgical intern and I needed to get to the OR. I wanted to avoid the amount of time it would take to put a new line in, so I grabbed some heparin, which is a blood thinner to um, remove the clot. It worked and I left. 10 minutes later, I got stat paged because I had, in my rush, used not a dilute form of heparin, but a very potent form of heparin, and I had completely co anticoagulated this sweet little old lady who could now bleed out because of my mistake. Yikes, it was bad. So we moved her to the ICU where I packed every pillow I could find around her because I didn't want anything touching her and we began treating her and she really was this tiny face in a sea of pillows who finally said, excuse me, it's really hot in here. Can we get rid of some of these pillows? The really good news is she was fine but I wasn't. Um, it was pretty devastating for me. My favorite quote comes from Jay Leno. Quote, the New England Journal of Medicine reports that nine out of 10 doctors agree that one out of 10 doctors is an idiot. <laughs> Close quote. <laughs> Don't be the idiot I was. Be very wary of your, aware of your weaknesses, address them, and attend to all the details. Let me now return to talking about being inspired by the human spirit, the caring and resiliency, to believing. I want to tell you about two patients who taught me a great deal. After my psychiatry residency, I did my first fellowship in oncology, the psychiatric aspects of cancer. I cared for people with lymphoma and leukemia. One of my favorite patients, whose name was Margaret, was a wonderful woman in her late 80s. She'd lived a full life, raised five children, worked as a nurse, and traveled all over the world, and was dying. I'd spend every time, I spent time every day with her and Jake, her husband of over 60 years. I got to know them both quite well over the months of, their treatment, of her treatment. I found Jake one day sobbing at the end of the, her hall. He took my hand and thanked me for the hundredth time for the care I was giving his child bride. He then asked me how he was going to get up in the morning without Margaret after 61 years of waking up at her side. I had no answer. I still haven't done anything, including breathe, for 61 years. I'm hoping to make that. Um, and I can't begin to imagine what Jake was going through. The next week, two days before Margaret died, and after a very long night on call for me, I went to see them in the afternoon. The room was dark, light hurt Margaret's eyes. The smell of her favorite scent, lilac, filled the room. The uneaten lunch tray sat next to the uneaten breakfast tray. Jake sat on her bed and was holding, they were holding hands and laughing. Jake stood up and gave me a signature handshake that by then had always morphed into one of the best bear hugs you can imagine. Margaret reached her hand up to me and motioned for me to sit down where Jake, Jake had been sitting. I was suddenly filled with what a privilege it was to be part of these people's lives. We talked about Margaret's night and her pain control. Then she held my hand in both of hers and began to tell me that she was worried about me, that I wasn't getting enough sleep and that I looked tired. I felt Jake's hand on my shoulder and he echoed her concerns. My initial response was, wait, this isn't the way it's supposed to happen. I'm the caregiver, you're the patient. This should only go one way. But I then realized this wasn't about being a physician and patient. This is about being human and caring. This is about connection. I promised to get some rest. One of the last things Margaret said to me before she died was, quote, you never know what's going to happen. You'd better be doing what you love, where you want to be, surrounded by the people you love. After Margaret died, Jake told me he'd understand if I couldn't make her funeral. I was not gonna miss a chance to honor this incredible woman. I had a place of unbelievable honor at the service sitting between two of her three sons. Their eldest son gave the eulogy and listed me as one of the important people in Margaret's life thanking me for the times I'd taken what could not have been more than a few minutes several times a day to check in on his mother. Never underestimate the power and importance of just being with your patient, being yourself, listening, and caring. I'm gonna say that again because I think it's very important. 
never underestimate the power and importance of just being with your patient, being yourself, listening, and caring. Sometimes that will be all you can do. Sometimes that'll be all the patient needs. The second patient is my father. He was one of 14 kids, son of a coal miner from West Virginia. While my mother's family has generations of physicians, my father was the first in his family to go to college. He went on to a wonderful career as an engineer and as, as a civilian in the Air Force. He and, raised, and my mother raised my sister with several very basic but important tenets. Always do what is right, finish what you start, care for the people dear to you, attend to those in need, give back to the community that raised and supported you, and do what feeds your soul and makes you happy. One of my favorite very awkward moments um, in my memory was in second or third grade when I asked my father, where do babies come from? My father told me this really horrible story um, that just really upset me, and I later discovered it was the truth, um, <laughs> which was even more troubling. But I came to treasure his honesty. Years later, in the midst of a rapidly progressing dementia, he was dying. We were living in the East Bay, and my sister and our State Department was in Namibia in Southern, Cal Southern Africa. To our, my complete amazement, our government got her from Namibia to SFO in under 20 hours after my call. My father's medical caregivers did everything they could to keep him alive until she returned. But he lapsed into unconsciousness, and it didn't look likely she'd see him alive. One of his nurses began whispering in his ear that his daughter, Tina, was on her way and really wanted to see him. Against the odds, and after a really crazy drive from SFO across the Bay Bridge, not only did he last, but he woke up and recognized my sister. We were all together as a family for just one more time, because my father died a few hours after that. At the time, I was head of the service at UCSF, where I am now, that took care of people like this. And I knew what to expect. I knew that my sister would not get back in time. I knew that he would, couldn't hold down that long. But I'd forgotten about something very, very important, believing in the strength of the human spirit, the strength of my father's spirit. Thank God his nurse had not forgotten that. My father taught me several last and incredibly important lessons. There's a lot we don't know, which means we keep exploring. While illness can and does change expectations and wishes, don't ever give up hope and never underestimate the power of our spirit. You are moving forward in medicine during tumultuous and exciting times. Major advancements, increased awareness of healthcare disparities, countrywide debates about healthcare delivery, economic challenges, and daily bad news from around the world. Balancing all of this, but while continuing your education and being very sleep deprived won't be easy. There are many challenges ahead. You arrived here with the heart and soul to face these challenges. You leave here with the skills and knowledge to meet these challenges. Do not lose your dedication, enthusiasm, and compassion, or your sense of humor. Another favorite quote from a very esteemed wizard, Albus Dumbledore, is worth repeating. Quote, there will come a time when you have to make a choice between what is right and what is easy, close quote. I know you will always do what is right. Every speaker has advice for graduates, so who am I to break tradition? If there is an unmet need, jump in and get started. Don't wait for someone else to get it going. I've seen you do this. You've inspired me to do this. Listen and respect all voices, even if you don't agree. Again that's been reinforced by all of you. Take pride in all aspects of your work. You got here by knowing a lot today. It's now time to really make peace with not knowing. When you don't know the answer to something, admit it. You'll be respected for your honesty and ability to acknowledge your challenge, and you'll give better patient care. Believe in yourself. Your values and core beliefs, be they small town or large city, cultural or faith-based, whatever your beliefs and values may be, hold them very dear. Make sure that there's time for those whom you cherish. Stay connected. 
Believe in your dreams. Don't let setbacks stop you. Live in a spirit of gratitude. The world is an exciting, chaotic, and often disturbing place. But keep aware that there is much to be thankful for. Believe in the good in the world, and you will see it every single day. Above all, remember to believe in the power of the human spirit in the healing of very simple kindness. Remember what Margaret said, you never know what's going to happen, so you'd better be doing what you love, where you want to be, surrounded by the people you love. I wish this for each of you. I know that you will go on to do great things, from small acts of kindness while giving outstanding care to your patients and community, to conquering current and future medical illnesses and healthcare delivery issues. When you fall asleep or throughout the day as a resident, it will be with the knowledge that you've made a difference in the world. I am touched beyond words that you chose me to deliver your commencement address today. We're incredibly proud of you, and you're, we're here to celebrate your accomplishments. I wish you all the successes. We, all of us here, believe in you. We'll begin once again to your next step in medicine, and remember to believe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Um, it is wonderful to have you and, and Dr. Freshleg back here at UC Davis today, providing such inspiring, wise, and encouraging words to our students. I'm Mark Service. I'm the Vice Dean for Medical Education. It's an honor for me to be here today. It is my favorite day of the year. Yesterday, we had a lovely awards and honor ceremony a luncheon where we provided a number of awards to our graduating students for their distinguished achievements, academic achievement, public service, community service, and professionalism, and many other outstanding accomplishments. But today at commencement, we have four remaining major awards that we present to medical students at the end of their four years of medical school. The first award is the Lauren D. Carlson Research Award. Following the untimely death of Dr. Lauren Carlson in 1972, the faculty of the School of Medicine established a special award in his honor. An admired scientist, teacher, and administrator, Dr. Carlson came to Davis in 1967 to establish the Department of Human Physiology. He was later appointed Associate Dean for Research development, and curricular affairs. It was in 1973 that the first Lauren D. Carlson Research Award was given for the most outstanding medical research accomplished by a senior medical student during his or her tenure in the school. With the recommendation of the Faculty Research Affairs Committee, I am pleased to present the award to a member of the class of 2017 whose work was judged to have made a significant contribution to research in the medical sciences. This year's Lauren D. Carlson Research Award goes to Christopher Fortenbach. The second award to be presented today is the School of Medicine Medal. It is presented to the student who best displays the qualities of leadership, scholarship, and respect for human life, which are so necessary to fulfill a physician's pledge to be of service to humanity. It is my privilege to present the School of Medicine Medal to this year's outstanding scholar and our student commencement speaker, Sophie Rocio.
The third award to be presented today is the Eli Benjamini Endowed Fund Award for Biological Sciences. This endowment was established in 2009 from his estate. Professor Benjamini was one of our founding faculty members in 1970. The fund is intended to honor the most outstanding senior doctoral student whose studies are within one of the fields of biological sciences. Selection of the recipient was made by the first and second year preclinical basic science faculty. Selection of one recipient this year was extremely difficult, and thus there was a decision to honor two individuals this year. It is my privilege to present this award to both Daniel Scholdice and Christopher Degas. The fourth award to be presented this morning is a very special award because it's determined by secret balloting of the class members. It is the Golden Goblet Award. Here it is. The goblet symbolizes UC Davis and it highlights the School of Medicine's commitment to teach physicians of excellence. It symbolizes the deep roots of this campus in the soil of California the study of the fruits of the earth and the application of science and inquiry to the betterment of humankind. It is a cup of joy and a celebration of selflessness and of service to others. The cup represents the commitment of the physician to seek sometimes to heal, often to relieve, and always to comfort. It is awarded each year to that member of the graduating class who in the opinion of the class best and most consistently demonstrates this joy and commitment. The School of Medicine and Cognizance of the Unbroken Lineage of Physicians from Ancient Days to the Future asks the recipient of the Golden Goblet to return it to us when he or she no longer practices medicine for presentation to yet another young physician. The class of 2017 by secret ballot selected Joseph Kim. On behalf of the Academic Senate faculty within the School of Medicine, I hereby recommend to Interim Vice Chancellor Nesbitt and Interim Dean Berglund the awarding of the degree of Doctor of Medicine, Master of Public Health, and Master of Health Informatics to all students who have completed degree requirements. The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to scholastic achievement the traditional result of the university's fulfillment of its primary duty. In our ceremony this morning, the degree of Doctor of Medicine will be presented to 102 students. The degree of Master of Public Health will be presented to 38 students. And the degree of Master of Health Informatics will be presented to six students. Will the students who are candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine, the degree of Master of Public Health, and the degree of Master of Health Informatics please write? So. Interim Vice Chancellor Nesbitt, may I present you this talented group of candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon the medical graduates the degree of Doctor of Medicine, 
When our public health graduates, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Public Health. And for our health informatics graduates, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Health Informatics. Graduates, you may now be seated. As we continue, Drs. Fancher and Sosa will announce the names of the new doctors of medicine. Dr. McCurdy will announce the names of the Masters for Public Health, and Dr. Anderson will announce the names of the Masters of Health Informatics. Drs. Service and Henderson will place the hoods. Will our Master of Health Informatics and Master of Public Health degree candidates please rise? So it'll be my pleasure to introduce the uh, candidates for the Masters of Health Informatics. Uh, we have uh, students from five separate countries today, all who have uh, been involved in an applied program of applied data sciences, health informatics, and application of, of computer science to medicine. Um, and I'm very grateful to have these students as part of our cohort, and it has been a pleasure to be a uh, part of their training over the last uh, two years. So I'd like to announce um, uh, Nalesh uh, Kandu Kandule. <laughs> Michael Sean Lehman. Basal Abdul Aziz Kanan. <laughs> Tara Suzanne Sharif Zada. <laughs> Dawn Leanne Vieira. The following candidates will be receiving their degree of Master in Public Health. Raya T. Ali Akbar. <laughs> Melissa Rose Bardo. Bear Rose Kushroff Chor. <laughs> Mimansa Kunal Cholera. <laughs> Lillian Savage Clements. Rolando Enrico Del Pozo. Thank you. Thank you. 
Laura Kate Farnsworth. Danielle Sumiko Fujino. Kristen Reen Go. <laughs> Jennifer Elise Graham. <clears throat> Amy Hang. Minur Hasib. Tatiana Monique Hurtado. Dana Jill Isaacs. Kayvon Jabbari. Sarah Kishen. <laughs> Carolyn Elizabeth King. <laughs> Lou Lau. Shavana Manukian. <laughs> Matthew Masaru Mayeda. Crystal Nicole Milne. Stella Chan Morris. Khadija Nine. Miriam Adesi Oduruque. Kimberly Yamilet Prado. Michelle Elizabeth Rodriguez. <laughs> Christina Renee Saylor.
Shariar Farid Siddiqui. Bonnie Kaur Singh. Rajni Kaur Sohal. Tamara Raquel Solarzano. Justin Masaaki Tonooka. George Ugarte Mendia, Jr. Mitchell Jet Young. The following candidates will be receiving their degree of Doctor of Medicine. <laughs> Dr. Ridwa Ali Abdi. Dr. Virginia Areshola Adewale. Dr. Amrit Singh Alawalia. <laughs> Dr. Arjong Ahmadpur. <laughs> Dr. Ifra Abdi Ali. Dr. Luther Leeson Arms. Dr. Talin Nora Arslanian. Dr. Meji Singh Aurora. Dr. Fatima Awan. <laughs> Dr. Sohela Fayiji Asgadi. Dr. Daniel Banuelos. Dr. Carolyn Black.
Dr. Kevin Ryan Carpenter. Dr. Flora L. Chang. Dr. Walter Sue Chang. Dr. Karina Chavez. Dr. Andrew Chomchinsawat. <laughs> Dr. Heather Nicole Cohen. Dr. Kristen Elizabeth Cutler. Dr. Mitchell Darren Datlow. Dr. Christopher Joseph. Degas. <laughs> Dr. Connor Mitchell Delman. <laughs> Dr. Rosemary Bustos Rias. Dr. Bethel Mizgana Asa. Dr. Johnny Fong. Dr. Christopher Robert Fortenbach. Dr. Lisandra Franco. <laughs> Dr. Christina Ann Gallerani. <laughs> Dr. Nolan Michael. Giel. <laughs> Dr. Rafael G. Gonzalez. <laughs> Dr. Parker Besant Goodell. Dr. David James Groves. <laughs> Dr. Neem Bao Ha. <laughs> Dr. Marwa Hakimi.
Dr. Emily Helen Halbach. Dr. Madeline Hanks. Dr. Alicia Carolyn Hansen. Dr. Ryan William Hare. Dr. Kayla Ray Harrington. Dr. Habiba Hashimi. Dr. Lauren Alexandria Hassoun. Dr. Kwokan Ho. Thank you, Dr. Sosa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Teresa Von V. Huang. Dr. Lillianne Grace Jewett. Dr. Jeremy Vincent Johnson. Dr. Dr. Andrew John Cadiz. Dr. Hamad Khan. Dr. Ian Kyung Hoon Kim. Dr. Joseph M. Kim. Dr. Christina Lori Lee. Dr. Jamie Kim Lee. Dr. Andrew Miguel Ligse. <laughs> Dr. Jonathan Eric Liu. Dr. Vin Quang Lu. Thank 
Dr. Emily Jane Ma. Dr. Karina Martinez Juarez. Dr. Anthony Neal Mefford. Dr. Philmon Solomon Mahanzo. Dr. Leonel Ontiveros Mendoza. Dr. Christine Marie Miller. Dr. Peter Paul Miller. Dr. Alyssa Karen Milliron. Dr. Nicholas James Montano. Dr. Angel Moran. Dr. Andrew Vincent Navlet. Congratulations, seems like you just got here. Dr. Jennifer Nock Nguyen. Dr. Gabo S. Inzigida. <laughs> Dr. Swathi Sripad Putki. Dr. Brian Pham. Dr. Fernando Daniel Rios. Dr. Peter William Roberts. Dr. Cristina Adriana Rodriguez. Dr. Sophie Lucas Suzanne Rocio. Dr. Casey Morgan Rounds. Dr. Haley J. Rosick. Dr. Randall Feliciano Rueda. Dr. 
Dr. Miguel Alonso Rubelcaba. Dr. Tommy Paul Saborito. Dr. Gaber Oscar Sala. Dr. Daniel J. Schuldice. Dr. Jennifer Wayan Kalani Shrestha. Dr. Leona Hillian Shum. Dr. Nyan Want Kaur Singh. Dr. Kelsey Elizabeth Sloat. Dr. Cesar Soria. Dr. Andrea Christina Steele. Dr. Maxwell P. Stevenson. Dr. Isabel Anna Struve. That gentleman's sister, Dr. Mazara Amelia Marañón Tabi. <laughs> Dr. Nicole Kimiko Takeda. Dr. Mililani. <laughs> Kelauna O Tras Bati. <laughs> Dr. NK Tushin Tugs. Dr. Luisa Fernanda Valenzuela, <laughs> Valenzuela Riveros. <laughs> Dr. Hanna Bianca Diaz Valino.
Dr. Mai Chur Vang. Dr. Diego Alejandro Vargas Valdivieso. <laughs> Dr. Maya June Esther Viavant. Dr. Stephen Vong. Dr. Vivian Su Vuong. And finally, Dr. Anastasia Christine Ward. Oh, there are two more. <laughs> and they are not on my list. So I will get a consult. One moment, please. And I'll wear my glasses. OK. Dr. Catherine Stephanie Yoshiko Wilkowski. Okay, and finally, for real this time, <laughs> Dr. Andrew Weiping Wong. The new physicians from the class of 2017 will now be reading the UC Davis Physician's Oath as their solemn pledge to serve humanity. Administering the oath will be Dr. Faith Fitzgerald. I invite our physician faculty and any Master of Public Health candidates or Ma Master of Health Informatics candidates who previously received a medical degree to stand with our physician graduates at this moment of dedication. Dr. Fitzgerald. Hello, everybody. That was a celebratory time and quite wonderful. I should tell you that, uh, I'll tell them. all your classes, you took many, many tests. You matched wonderfully for residency, best I've seen in a long time. You have today been gowned, hooded, and wildly separated by your proud families, friends, and teachers. And you are diplomats of the doctor of medicine title. But you're not yet physicians. Not until you take this oath 
and only for as long as you honor it all the days of your professional life. So you all have it written there. Yes? Let's do it together. Now being uh, met, admitted to the high calling of a physician, I solemnly pledge to consecrate my life to the care of the sick and to the health and service of humanity. I will practice medicine with conscience and in truth. The health and dignity of my patients will be my first concern. I will hold in confidence all my patients relate to me. I will not permit considerations including those based on race, ethnicity, gender, age, disability, sexual orientation, religious or political beliefs, or any of the other differences among people that have been excuses for misunderstanding, dissension, or hatred to influence my duty to care for those in need of my service. I will respect medical decisions that affect them. I will make choices that coincide with their own values and beliefs. I will try to increase my confidence constantly and respect those who teach and those who broaden our knowledge by research. I will try to prevent as well as cure disease. I make these promises And now you are allowed to move the tassels on your caps from right to left. So, there is, don't worry, there's time for applause. So, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 46th commencement ceremony for the School of Medicine. To a, to a, to end this ceremony today, I would like our new physicians, public health and informatics graduates to have to face their families and loved ones. You graduates, are the fulfillment of dreams and aspirations. Uh, and I invite you to again thank parents, husbands, wives, partners, significant others, relatives and friends who has made all this possible with your applause. And all the rest of us should join in in congratulating our graduates with a thundering applause. You are now welcome to join us in, for a reception in the Mondavi Center lobby to celebrate our graduates. I will ask the audience to please remain seated until the academic recessional has fully exited the hall. Thank you. <laughs>